In this video, we are going to continue looking at the strings in Java, and we'll look at more methods available in the string class. We'll start with a review of the length method. Um, we'll go over to uppercase and to lowercase methods. We'll look at the car at method, which will retrieve a character at a specific location in our string. We'll look at the index of method. We'll look at the substring method in Java. In the previous video, we explained that methods are basically just a collection of statements that perform a specific operation on the data stored in an object. And we said that the string class has multiple methods that we can use to perform operations on the text that is stored in that string object. To use a method or to invoke that method, we will call that method on the object that we want to use it on. So we call it calling the method on that object. And to call a method, we use the dot notation. So we use the object reference, the name that we give that object, or the reference name we gave that object, dot, then followed by the method name. The first method we looked at in the string class was the length method. And the length method, we use it to count how many characters we have in that string object. So when you use it, it will return back an integer number that represents the number of characters we have in that text. Now the number that we get back, which is the integer number we get back, we can print it out to the user to the console, or we can even store it in an integer variable. To use that length method, again, we use the object reference, the name we gave our objects, and then dot followed by the method name, which is length. It's important to remember that the parentheses are part of the method. All methods have parentheses. Some methods will have values inside these parentheses, and some methods have empty parentheses like the length method. If you forget to add these parentheses, your code will not be able to compile because that's a compilation error. All the information we need about how to use a method is available in the API of that class or the application programming interface. The API provides you with all the methods available in that class that you are able to use. It also provides you with information about what data you can store in that class and how you can construct objects from that class. If we take a look at the length method or part of the um, string class API that has the length method, you'll see that we have the first part telling me the return type. The return type is the type of data we will get back from that method after it executes. And you'll see that the return type for the length method is an integer. So we are getting back an integer value. So since we are expecting to get back an integer value, we need to do something with that integer, whether we are printing it out to the user or we are storing it in an integer variable. We can also see the method name, and this is the name we use to call that method. You will also see an argument list, which is the values that this method can take inside these parentheses. If you have an empty parentheses like here, that means this method is not requiring any extra data to be able to perform that operation. And then you'll see the description of that method, which tells you what will this method do. And you'll see that this method returns the number of characters in the string object that you called it on. Another two methods we looked at last time were two uppercase and two lowercase. Both of them are returning a string. Two uppercase is used to return a copy of that string that you called it on with all the letters converted to uppercase. To, to lowercase will be the will be doing the opposite. So it will return the, a copy of the string with all the letters converted to lowercase. Remember, these two methods do not modify on the data stored in the original string. They are just going to return a copy of that string converted to either all letters uppercase or all letters lowercase. So the value that you are getting back, the string value you are getting back, you should be storing it in another string object or printing it out to the user. If you want to change the original object, you can store it back in the same object reference that you used before. Another method available in the string class in Java is the car at method. The car at method is used to retrieve a character from that string, and this character will be at a specific location or index. So you want to get the last character in that string or the first character in that string, you use the car at method to retrieve that character. 
So the return type, you notice it's a car, not an integer, because it's returning back a character now. And this method needs extra information to be able to execute. And this information is the location of the character you are looking for, or the index of that character you are looking for. So when you call the car at method, it will return back the character at the location that you passed to that method. Now it's important to know that in Java, we start the numbering for our characters in the string with number zero. So if I have the string Smith, the first character S is at location zero. So we start the numbering or the indexing in our string characters from number zero. So this string has five characters. We start from zero up to four. So the last character is at location four. It's not at location five. So let's look at some examples here in Eclipse. I'm going to create a string and call it name. And I'm going to store the value Smith in it. Now, if I wanted to retrieve the first character in the string name, I will use the object reference name dot followed by the method name, which is car at. Notice that the car at is going to take an index. And you will see that Eclipse tells you that this index has to be an integer. So remember, the indexing starts from 0 up to the length minus 1. So if we have five characters, it's going from 0 up to 4. So if I wanted to retrieve the first character, I will go to location 0. Now remember, this method is actually returning a character. So if you do not do something with that character, you are actually going to lose it. So I'm going to create a car variable and I'm going to call it letter. And I will store in that character the value that I'm getting back from calling the car at method at location zero on the name object. Once I get that character back, I'm going to print that character. So system.out.println, and we are printing that letter. So let's save and run and see what character we are getting back you'll see we are printing out the character S, which is at location zero. The next character will be at location one. So if we run this, you'll see that the character that is being printed is M. If I want to get to the last character, since I have five characters in that string, my last character will be at location four. And if I run it now, you'll be able to see I'm getting the last character, which is H. Now, what if I did not know how many characters I have in that string and I wanted to print the last character? I can retrieve the number of characters in that string using the length method. So I can create an integer variable and let's call it num of characters. And inside that integer, I'm going to store the number of characters I have in that name. So name dot length, that will get me the number of characters. Now, once I have the number of characters, I can use that variable inside my method here, num of characters. But I will need to subtract one from that number because again, we are starting from zero up to the length minus one. So we have five characters, we start from zero, zero, one, two, three, four. So the last character will be at four. So we have five characters. The last character is at location four. Four is basically five minus one, which is the length minus one. So the first step is to get how many characters we have in that string using the length method. And then we can subtract one from that number to get the index or location of the last character we have in that string. So if I save this and run it, you'll see I will also be printing out H. If you forgot to put minus one in here, you will actually get an error because you are trying to access the character at location five, but this string does not have a character at location five. The last location is four. Zero, one, two, three, four. We do not have a location five. So that will give you an error, which is out of bound exception. String index out of bound exception. We do not have a location numbered five. The last location is actually number four. So it's really important to remember, when you are retrieving a character, 
you pass a valid index between 0 up to the length minus 1, which is the last location in that string object. Another method available in the string class in Java is the index of method. And this does the opposite of the car at. In the index of, you are giving me a character or a smaller string to look for inside the string object. If we find that character or small string, we will return back the index or the location of that character. So the index of will return back an integer that represents the index. It will take an argument, either a character or a string. If you pass a string, that means you are looking, for example, for a word in a sentence. If we find that word, we will return the index or the location of the first occurrence of that string. So if you have multiple words that match that search string, you'll only get the index or the location of the first one of them. If that substring or smaller string is not found in the string, you will get back minus one to indicate that we could not find it. Same thing if you pass a character, you are looking for a character in a string. If that character is found, you will get back the integer that represents the index of that character or the location of that character. If that character was not found, you will get back minus one to indicate that this character was not found in that string. Remember, it only returns the location of the first occurrence of that character. So if you have multiple occurrences of that character in the string, you're only getting back the index or the location of the first occurrence of that character. So let's try that method in Eclipse. I still have the string name that has the value Smith stored in it. And I want to get the location of the character i. So I can go directly and print that system.out.println. And remember, object name or object reference dot the method that I need to use, which is index of. I'm looking for a character, which is the character i. Now, remember, characters have to be surrounded by single quotations. So I'm going to place that character into single quotations. Now, if I save it and run it, you will see that my character i is at location 2. S is at location 0, M is at location 1, and I is at location 2. If I try to look for a character that does not exist in my string, so for example, I'm looking for the character K, I will get back minus 1, which indicates that this character is not part of my string. We can also look for more than one character, or a substring, as we call it. To look for a search string, we will use the string which is double quotations, and let's say I'm looking for the th. So I'm looking for th. I'm not looking for a character anymore. I'm looking for a series of characters, which is th. So if you look for th, th is actually at location 3. So th is at location 3, and that should be the index that we get back from that index of. We usually use the index of with strings when we have a sentence. So let's say Smith is a good student. So I'm looking for the word good. This will tell me if the word good exists in my string and if it exists, what location this word is at. Now the location you will get is actually the location of the first character of that word. So this word is starting at location 11. If you misspelled it, so I looked for goods. Goods does not exist in my string. So I will get minus one, which indicates that this word does not exist in my string. The last method we are going to look at in this video is the substring method. And the substring method, we use it to retrieve part of the string um, back as a string. So the car at, we used it to retrieve a single character. The substring could be used to retrieve more than a single character, and it will be retrieved back or returned back as a string, not a character. So the substring is returning back a string. It takes an integer for the starting index and an integer for the end index. The starting index will be included in my substring. The end index will not be included. So we are retrieving back a substring, a part of that string that starts at the starting index and ending 
at the end index minus 1. Another variation of that method is just to pass one integer, which is the starting index, and that will return a substring that starts at the starting index and ends at the end of that string. So it will go from that index until the end of that string. So let's try it in Eclipse. I have my sentence here, Smith is a good student, and I want to retrieve par back part of that sentence. Not only a single character, I want to retrieve uh, multiple characters or a series of characters, and that's where I will be using the substring. I can print out that substring directly, so system.out.println, and then the name of the object, which is name, dot substring. Notice when you start typing it, you will see that we have different variations of that substring. One that takes an integer that indicates the beginning index, and one that takes the beginning index and the ending index. Notice that we separate between these two values with a comma, not a semicolon. So I'm going to use that substring, and I'm going to pass only the beginning index, and let's pass 11. So what will that do? It will go to location 11, and it will print whatever is at location 11 with everything until the end of that string. So if you run this, it will print out good student. So the substring, if you pass only one number, this is the starting index, which is at G. And if you do not pass an ending index, it will go from that location up to the end of that string. If you only want to get a part of that string without going to the end, you can use the comma and pass the ending index. Now the ending index is not included in that substring. So it will go up to that index minus one. So if I typed here 15, it should go and print 11, 12, 13, and 14. So the letters at 11, G, 12, 13, and 14. So it should print out the word good. So if you try it, it's printing out the word good. So the ending index is not included in the substring. It will go from the starting index, including that index, or the letter add that index, up to the end index, not including the letter add that end index. Remember, when you are using string indices, they start from 0 up to the length minus 1. So if you are using the substring method and used a negative start index, or a start index that is past the last character, you will generate an error string index out of bound exception. Same thing with the ending index. If you specified a negative index, negative end index, or an end index greater than the length of the string, it will generate also a string index out of bounds exception.